So in my last video, I talked about a timpani hand technique uh, that could be applied to other things. Um, but it just generally got me thinking about timpani and how cool they are. Timpanists are generally considered to be a specialized version of regular percussionists, and they're often held in higher regard. And it's actually a really cool instrument, although I'm not very good at playing it. So the number five thing is that Timpani are actually a melodic instrument. They're usually played in groups of four, but it's not that uncommon to see them played in groups of five, which gives them more than a two octave range, just slightly. And since they're tuned with pedals these days, you don't have to use your hands to tune them, which means you can actually tune them while you're playing them or very quickly in between notes. And if you have a really good ear, you can actually play melodies on them. So it's not just like regular drums, they're a melodic instrument. So number four, since they're a melodic instrument, you can actually play a concerto on them, and Philip Glass has probably the most bombastic or involved concerto, where you require two timpani players separately, as pictured here, and I've heard as little as nine drums, but here they clearly have 14. So kettle drums, in a general sense, are actually really ancient. The Europeans got their kettle drums in the 13th century from the people in the uh, Arabian Peninsula area, and they played these things which are called nakara, and they still play them today, but they're the exact precursors of the modern kettle drum. If you go back farther than that, you can find this Dong Sun drum from Southeast Asia. It was made uh, as much as 3,000 years ago, which is pretty cool. They're not exactly the same as sort of Indo-European uh, timpani, but it is a kettle drum. So number two is that you can actually get a surprisingly large range of sizes in timpani smaller than the five that I showed you that were standard. So the smallest of the standard five was 20 inches, and here you can see a 16 inch chain tuned drum. It doesn't have a pedal, it's a little less versatile, but it is a real timpani in every other sense. You can actually go smaller than that down to a 14 or even a 12 inch, what they call a timpani, but as you can see here it's clearly just like a glorified concert tom. Um, but you play it like a timpani, it's intended to be used where timpani are used, it's just really tiny, but that doesn't even take the cake. Uh, here you can see a set of four fiberglass, obvious kettle drums, more of the classic timpani shape and design, and they're tunable, and they're only nine inches across. So these are probably the smallest timpani you could ever get. If you want to stretch the definition, you could sort of include rototoms in the timpani family since they're tunable, and the smallest one of those is six inches, but that's really a stretch. Okay, number one on my list is going the other direction. Timpani can actually get a lot bigger than the standard five. Uh, you can see here that these chain timpani that we talked about earlier come uh, from 16 inches all the way through all the standard sizes, which ends at about 32, and then now they're making a 35 inch one, which would be probably a major third lower. But here you can see the timpani collection of the Concert Gebau Orchestra in Amsterdam, which I'm probably saying that wrong, but that big one there is actually 48 inches across, and it was the largest timpani on earth th that I'm aware of, except if you go back into the past and you talk about these Dong Sun drums again, which again, they're not regular timpani, um, but they're in the kettle drum family. This one's 63 inches across. It's called the Moon of Pajang, which is pretty cool, made in 300 BC. But recently this guy, Jonathan Haas, came up with this 70 inch timpani, rope tuned. He actually found this giant copper bowl in a field somewhere. It was originally intended for cheese making, and you can see him standing there next to it. It's just gigantic. Uh, he made it into a timpani because its timpani are just big bowls, so it made sense. So, uh, to my knowledge, 70 inches is the largest timpani ever produced, um, which is pretty cool. Who doesn't like big drums? Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully, I'll have more actual technique and educational videos coming out in the future. But stay tuned to the channel, and thanks again.